Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. Let's continue. Today, we will talk about Earth. Universe created matter. In my four previous presentations, I followed the standard paradigm dark matter that is not quite right for hypersphere world universe model, in which the world consists of particles of ordinary matter, protons, electrons, photons, and neutrinos. On the other hand, there are particles created by the universe. Universe created particles of a new kind of universe created matter. In the fifth presentation, I introduce a new term, you see particles, which have following characteristics. You see fermions or bosons, rest energies, weak interaction and self annihilation, like Majorana fermions. Ordinary particles are a byproduct of UC particle self annihilation. It is easy to switch from dark D matter to universe created UC matter. In this table, a basic energy unit E0 equals to 70 mega electron volts. H is the Planck constant, C is a gravitodynamic constant, A is a basic size unit and alpha is a dimensionless Rydberg constant. These particles are dark when astronomers observe the world with telescopes only in visible spectrum. The contemporary astronomy allows us to observe the world in wavelengths from radio waves up to gamma rays. Then they are not dark at all. The first known binary system was Cygnus X1, that is typically the brightest persistent source of hard X-rays with energies up to 60 kilo electron volts. In 2000, Minch et al. discovered binary galaxy system Virga HI21 with NGC 4254, which has the 21 centimeter emission. Two kinds of matter have different origin of radiations. Ordinary matter radiates electromagnetic waves from radio waves up to X-rays by electrons outside nuclei. Lawrence Lieberman scientists probed nitrogen gas at X-ray energies of up to 8 kilo electron volts, the highest X-ray energy ever used at an X-ray free electron laser. You see matter? radiates gamma rays, which emitted by nuclei as a result of self annihilation of UC particles with rest energies covering 18 orders of magnitude from tera electron volt to micro electron volt. Introduction. Every year on April 22, we have celebrated Earth Day and the beautiful planet we call home. Earth Day, established in 1970, has been used to highlight our planet's environment, challenges, and raise awareness of the importance of protecting our world for future generations. To provide the protection of our planet, we should explain Earth's environmental challenges to the best of our knowledge in frames of contemporary geophysics. In this presentation, we give a short overview of the developed womb and pay particular attention to the principal role of UC matter in the Earth's life. Below, we discuss different aspects of the Earth, a condition of early Earth before the beginning of life of a need, internal structure, the 660 kilometers boundary that we named geomagma with electrical conductivity, random variations of Earth's rotational speed on a daily basis, origin of moon, expanding Earth, internal heating, faint young sun paradox, geocorona and planetary coronas. The model revealed the fact that the sun and, and the moon activity causes the geomagma activity and as a consequence, consequence, wrong random variations of Earth's rotational speed by the periodically varying sun's and moon's magnetic field. Essence of womb. 
Principal points of womb are as follows. The finite world is a 3D hypersphere of the 4D nucleus of the world, which is a 4D bubble expanding in the fourth spatial dimension. All points of the hypersphere are equivalent. There are no preferred centers or boundaries of the world. The universe is responsible for creation of UC matter in the 4D nucleus of the world. UC particles carry new UC matter into the world. Luminous part matter is a byproduct of UC particle self annihilation. UC matter plays a central role in creation and evolution of all macro objects. Womb introduces dark, invisible epoch spanning from beginning of the world 1422 billion years ago for 0.45 billion years and luminous epoch ever since 13.77 billion years. We emphasize that absolute age of the world, 14.22 billion years, is determined by the experimentally measured value of gravitational parameter G. Transmi transition from that epoch to luminous epoch is due to an explosive volcanic rotational fusion of a spinning UC matter supercluster cause and self annihilation of UC particles. Womb is the only cosmological model in existence that is consistent with the fundamental law of conservation of angular momentum. The medium of the world, consisting of protons, electrons, photons, neutrinos, and UC particles, is an active agent in all physical phenomena in the world. Time, space, and gravitation are closely connected with the impedance gravitomagnetic parameter and energy density of the medium. Macro objects of the world possess the following properties. Their pores are made up of UC particles. They contain other particles, including UC particles and ordinary particles in shells surrounding cores. Macro objects cores are essentially UC matter reactors fueled by UC particles. All chemical elements, compositions, substances, rocks, etc., are produced by macro objects themselves as the result of UC particles self annihilation in their course. Womb is based on two parameters only dimensionless Rydberg constant alpha, later named fine structure constant, and time varying quantity Q, that is in fact the Dirac large number. Early Earth. Formation of Earth. The oldest material found in solar system is dated to 4.568 billion years. That is almost equal to 457 billion years. In the article, the age of the Earth in the 20th century, a problem mostly solved, Bell Rimmel, Rimmel, stabbed. Whether this age represents the age of the Earth's accretion of core formation or of the material from which the Earth formed is not yet known, but recent evidence suggests it may approximate the later material from the which the Earth. In whom UC, mat UC matter core of the Earth was born as the result of the explosive volcanic rotational fusion of the Sun's UC matter core 4.557 billion years ago. Origin of mean Moon The standard giant impact hypothesis suggests that a Mars-sized body called Tia impacted the proto-Earth, creating a large debris ring around Earth, which then accreted to form the moon. Establishing the age of the moon is critical to understanding solar system evolution and the formation of rocky planets, including Earth. In 2023, Greer et al. in the article 4.46 Giga Amun Zircon's Anchor Chronology of Lunar Magma Ocean have dated the moon to at least 446 billion years old. 
we stress that 110 million years is not enough for the formation of moon in accordance with geon impact hypothesis. In whom you see matter core of the moon was born as the result of the explosive volcanic rotational fusion of the Earth's UC matter core 4.57 billion years ago. Continental crust of Earth. The long favored paradigm for the development of continental crust is one of progressive growth beginning at about 4 billion years ago. To test this hypothesis, Harrison et al measured initial ratio of hafnium isotopes values of 401 to 437 billion years, the title circles from Western Australia. They obtained results that support the view that crust had formed by 4.4.4.5 billion years ago and was rapidly recycled into the mantle. Compare with the age of the moon, at least 446 billion years old. The same numbers. Earth's atmosphere and oceans were formed by volcanic activity and outgassing. Most of the gas was carbon dioxide and water vapor as they condensed into oceans. In this model, atmospheric Greenhouse gases kept the oceans from freezing when the newly forming sun had only 70% of its current luminosity. According to a lumen learning Earth sign, scientists have developed a number of hypotheses about how the oceans formed. Though these hypotheses have changed over time, one idea now has the wide support of Earth scientists called the volcanic outgazing theory. This means that water vapor given off by volcanoes erupting over millions of billions of years cooled and condensed to form Earth's oceans. <coughs> In the article Uncovering, Uncovering Mysteries of Earth's Primeval Atmosphere 4.5 and a half billion years ago, an emergence of life, a leading scientist Saucy wrote, four and a half billion years ago, Earth would have been hard to recognize. Instead of the forests, mountains, and oceans that we know today, the surface of our planet was covered entirely by magma, the molten rocky material that emerges when volcanoes erupt. This much the scientific community agrees on. What is less clear is what the atmosphere at the time was like. In the article, Redox State of Earth's Magma Ocean and its Venus-like Early Atmosphere, Soci et al. found that after cooling down from the magma state, the young Earth had an atmosphere that was slightly oxidizing with carbon dioxide as its main constituent, as well as the nitrogen and some water. The surface pressure was also much higher, almost 100 times that of today, and the temperature was much higher due to the hot surface. These characteristics made it more similar to the atmosphere of today's Venus than to that of today's Earth. Based on their results, the author made a conclusion that a popular theory of the emergence of life on Earth, in which lightning strikes interact with certain gases, notably ammonia and methane, to create amino acids, the building blocks of life, seems much less likely. The necessary gases was simply not sufficiently abundant. Origin of life. Dot et al. in the article Evidence for Early Life in Earth's Oldest Hydrothermal When Precipitates Road. Also, it is not known when or where life on Earth began, 
some of the earliest habitable environments may have been submarine hydrothermal vents. Here we describe putative fossilized microorganisms that are at least 3.77 billion and possibly 4.228 billion years old and ferruginous sedimentary rocks interpreted as a sea flow hydrothermal vent related precipitates. Collectively, these observations are consistent with an oxidized biomass and provide evidence for biological activity in submarine hydrothermal environments more than 3.77 billion years ago. Boom. The proposed concept of UC matter reactors in UC matter cores of all gravitationally rounded macro objects successfully explain all these hypotheses and results for the early Earth. The upper mantle with crust are due to UC matter core volcanic eruptions of the homemade compositions, including magma which produced as the result of the self annihilation of UC particles in the core. It explains the result that continental crust had formed by 4.5 billion years ago. Earth's atmosphere and oceans were formed by a volcanic activity and outgassing of UC matter core. The thickness of the upper mantle with crust is growing in time. The early Earth had a smaller thickness than it is in the present time. Hence, the temperature of the Earth's surface was higher than its calculated temperature based on the sun's output at that time. It kept the oceans from freezing when the newly forming sun had only 70% of its current luminosity. The biological activity in submarine hydrothermal environments more than 3.77 billion years ago can be explained by a generation of all kinds of chemical elements and compositions produced into the Earth's UC matter core. Modern Earth's internal structure. Information about the Earth structure mostly comes from the analysis of seismic waves. According to the standard model, the Earth has the following layers, an outer silicate solid crust with solid mantle, a liquid outer core and solid inner core. The inner core is believed to be composed of an iron nickel alloy with some other elements. The temperature at the inner core surface is estimated to be approximately 5700 Kelvin. The liquid outer core surrounds the inner core and is believed to be composed of iron mixed with nickel and trace amounts of lighter elements. Also, seismic waves propagate through the core as it, if it was solid. Measurements cannot distinguish between a perfectly solid material from an extremely viscous one. Some scientists have therefore considered whether there may be slow convection in the inner core as is believed to exist in the mantle. That could be an explanation for the anisotropy detected in seismic studies. Main characteristics of the Earth layers are presented in Table 2. Let's take a look at the structure of the Earth. An inner core and outer core that extend from the center to about 55% of the Earth radius with density rho maximum 13.1, rho minimum 90.9 thousands kilogram per cubic meter. Lower mantle spanning from the outer core to about 90% of the Earth radius below 660 kilometers, with density rho maximum 5.6 and rho minimum 3.4 thousands kilogram per cubic meter. 
upper mantle spanning from the lower mantle to about 99% of Earth's radius below 35 kilometers with density rho maximum 4.4 and rho minimum 3.4 thousands kilogram per cubic meter. There is a seismic city cut of 660, 660 kilometer discontinuity. Rho minimum 3.4 for lower man mantle is less than rho maximum 4.4 thousands kilogram per cubic meter for upper mantle. The Earth's core is rotating faster than its surface by about 0.0305 degrees per year. Inner core, outer core, and lower mantle contain most of the Earth's mass. In our view, the inner core and outer core and lower mantle contain most of the Earth's mass. In our view, the inner core, outer core, and lower mantle are the parts of the Earth's liquid, you see, matter core, which have different viscosities from extremely high values for the inner core going down to 60, 60, 660 kilometers boundary between the lower mantle and upper mantle with crust. It is worth noting that solar core rotates 3.8 times faster than the surrounding envelope. The fact that the Earth's core and solar core rotate faster than surrounding envelope, despite high viscosity of the internal medium, is intriguing. Worm explained this phenomenon through the absorption of UC particles by Earth's core and solar core over time tau. UC particles supply not only additional mass proportional to tau in power one and a half, but also additional angular momentum proportional to tau squared. UC matter core irradiates products of UC particle self-annihilation, which carry away excessive angular momentum. The solar wind is the result of this mechanism. The 660 kilometers boundary, geomagma, Wu, Ni, and Irving investigated scattered seismic waves traveling inside the Earth to constrain the roughness of the Earth's 660 kilometer boundary. The researchers were surprised how by just how rough the boundary is, rougher than the surface layer that we all live on. Their statistical model didn't allow for precise height determinations, but there is a chance that these mountains are bigger than anything on the surface of the Earth. The roughness was not equally distributed either, either. just as the crust surface has smooth ocean floors and massive mountains, the 660 kilometer boundary has rough areas and smooth patches. Lacking formal name for this layer, the researchers simply call it the 60, 660 kilometers boundary. Mark and Skoff, in the article, Volume Collapse Instabilities in Deep Focus Earthquakes, a shear source nucleated and driven by pressure, explains the mystery of the long-standing observations in deep focus earthquakes 400-700 kilometers by symmetry breaking instabilities in high pressure phase in transformation. According to Boom, the 660 kilometers boundary is a boundary between Earth's UC Mector 4 and upper mantle with crust, which were produced by UC Mector 4 during 4.57 billion years. The deep focus earthquakes are connected with random mass ejection happening at the 660 kilometers boundary as the result of UC particles in uh, UC particles self annihilation in the UC met matter core. All chemical elements, compositions, substances of the Earth, including protons, electrons, multi-charged ions, isotopes, 
Calium-40, Uranium-238, Thorium-232, Plutonium-244 are produced within UC matter reactor inside of the Earth as the result of UC particle self annihilation. They concentrate into the 660 kilometer boundary and arrive in the crust of the Earth due to convection currents in the mantle carrying heat and all chemical products from the interior to the planet's surface. Earth's magnetic field. According to Wikipedia, the magnetic North Pole is a point on the surface of Earth's northern hemisphere at which the planet's magnetic field points vertically downward. There is only one location where this occurs, near but distant from the geographic North Pole. The geomagnetic North Pole is the northern antipedal pole of an ideal dipole model of the Earth's magnetic field. North magnetic pool, pole moves over time. In 2001, it was determined lie west of Ellesmere Island in northern Canada. In 2009, it was moving toward Russia at between 55 and 60 kilometers per year. In 2013, the distance between the North Magnetic Pole and the geographic North Pole was approximately 800 kilometers. Its southern hemisphere counterpart is the South Magnetic Pole. Since Earth's magnetic field is not exactly symmetric, the North and South Magnetic Poles are not antipedal, meaning that a straight line drawn from one to the other does not pass through the geometric center of Earth. In 1822, Ampere proposed that internal currents are responsible for Earth's magnetism. In 1990, Larmor proposed that a dynamo might be generating the field. L. Setzer considered a fuzzy of the presently accepted dynamo theory as an explanation of the Earth's magnetism. During 1944-47, L. Setzer published papers describing the first mathematical model for the origin of the Earth's magnetic field. He conjectured that it could be generated by electric currents in the conductive iron alloys of its core, created by convection currents due to heat escaping from the core, where it came from. The Earth and most of the planets in solar system, as well as the Sun and other stars, all generate magnetic fields through the motion of electrically conductive fluids. At the dawn of the 21st century, numerical modeling of the Earth's magnetic field has not been successfully demonstrated. Initial models are focused on field generation by convection in the planet's fluid outer core. It was possibly to show the generation of a strong Earth-like field when the model assumed a uniform core surface temperature an exceptionally high viscosity for the core fluid. Computations which incorporated more realistic parameter values yield magnetic fields that were less Earth-like, but indicated that model refinements may ultimately lead to an accurate analytical model. Slight variations in the core surface temperature in the range of a few millikelvins result in significant increases in convective flow and produce more realistic magnetic fields. Millikelvin's fluctuations, it's not the physics when you have 5,700 kilogram. Sorry. The moon has an external magnetic field of less than 0.2 nanotesla or less than about 100,000 that of Earth. Contemporary view is that the Moon doesn't have a global dipolar magnetic field and only has 
crustal magnetization likely acquired early in the history when a dynamo was still operating. Early in its history, 4 billion years ago, its magnetic field strength was likely close to that of those today. This early dynamo field apparently expired by about 1 billion years ago after the lunar core had crystallized. The sun's magnetic field explained the following way. The radiative zone, zone and the convective zone are separated by a transition layer that taco climb. This is the region where the sharp regime change between the uniform rotation of the radiative zone and the differential rotation of the convection zone results in a large shear between the two, a condition where successive horizontal layers slide past one another. Presently, it is hypothesis that a magnetic dynamo of solar dynamo within this layer generates the sun's magnetic field. It is worth noting the solar core rotates 3.8 times faster than the envelope, and the Earth's core is rotating faster, faster than its surface by about 0.3.5 degrees per year, which can explain the large sphere. According to Wundt, all gravitational around at macro objects have the same internal structure. You see matter, of course, different envelopes and intermediate layers between them, electrical currents of which define their magnetic fields. In case of Milky Way galaxy, it is electron-positron shell, Sun, the tacoc line, Earth, the 660 kilometers boundary that we named geomagma, moon, a boundary between core and mantle that we named lunar magma. Random variations of Earth's rotational speed. Jones and Bicos in the article Earth is in a hurry in 2020 wrote, when highly accurate atomic clocks were developed, they showed that the length of a mean solar day can vary by milliseconds. These differences are obtained by measuring the Earth's rotation with respect to distant astronomical objects. It turned out that the variations of the day length throughout 2020 were in the range 1.62 milliseconds minus 146 milliseconds. The speed of the Earth's rotation varies constantly because of the complex motion of its molten core, oceans and atmosphere, plus other effects. In figure one, depicted variation of day length throughout 2020. The length is down is shown as the difference in milliseconds between Earth's rotation and 86,400 seconds. It is worth noting that there is some kind of periodicity, periodicity of peaks on figure one. We use the data obtained by Jones, Vickers, and Hawking and got variation of day lengths throughout 2023, depicted on figure two. As a result, we found similar peaks with a periodicity 13.66 Earth days, which equals to the half of Moon's sidereal rotation period, fixed star to fixed star, 27.32 Earth days. It means that a lunar magma, electrical currents of which define the Moon's magnetic field, influences geomagma with electrical conductivity and as a result changes the Earth's day length. In frames of womb, random variations of the Earth's rotational speed on a daily basis can be explained by variations in the activity of the U your Earth's UC reactor in and geomagma. 
as the result of UC particle self annihilation, random mass ejections are happening during a time of high UC matter reactor activity. The Earth's rotational speed is lower long days due to increase of the Earth's moment of inertia. When random mass ejections are less frequent, the Earth's moment of inertia is decreasing. We observe short days. On figure uh, three, we can see deviation of a day length from sea based day since 1962 to 2019. You see, it's no usual behavior, usual variations of a day length. On figure four, presented deviation of average day legs from sea based day since 1973 to 2023. Let us analyze the proposed mechanism. The relative change of the day length throughout 2020 and 2023 was about 2 multiplied 10 to the minus 8. Hence, the relative change of the Earth's moment of inertia must be about the same value. If a layer of mass M at radius R will shift on H, the relative change of the Earth's moment of inertia will be about 10 to the minus 8, where M and R capitals are the mass and radius of the Earth respectively. In case of the atmosphere, Ratio M to a mass of L is about 10 to the minus 6, and H over R is about 10 to the minus 2. It means that H about 64 kilometers. In case of the oceans with ratio of mass about 10 to the minus 4, H over R is about 10 to the minus 4 either. It means that H 640 meters. In case of the geomagma with ratio about 10 to the minus 5, H over R about 10 to the minus 3, it means that H is about 6.4 kilometers. The estimated values of the masses and shifts show that there is no way to explain the random variations of the speed of the Earth's rotation by the complex motions of oceans and atmosphere, as it was supposed by Jones and Vickers. They can be explained by random mass ejection in the geomagma. It is worth noting that since 1973 to, 20, to 2023, the average deviation of the average day length dropped down from 2.7 milliseconds to 1.1 milliseconds. Take a look, 2.7.1 milliseconds. We explain this drop the following way. You see particles supply additional angular momentum proportional to tau squared. Relative energy Earth's angular momentum for 50 years for 50 years is about 2.2, 10 to the minus 8, where AE is the Earth's age. It means that the average length of the day will be shorter, but this value 1.9 millisecond, which is in a good agreement with experimentally observed 2.6 milliseconds. The maximum activity of UC matter reactor and geomagma and maximum of the average day length were observed at 2016, 2006, 1995, 1983, and 1972, which are about 11 years apart. Take a look, 2016, 2006, 1995, 1983, 1972. It is interesting that the full solar uh, full solar cycle is actually a 22-year phenomenon. The sunspot cycle happens because of this pole flip. North becomes south and south becomes north approximately every 11 years. 
Summer leave on years later, the poles reverse again back to where they started. The sun behaves similarly over the course of each 11 year cycle, no matter which pole is on top. On a figure two presented the early average sunspot number for a period 400 years. Consider that the last minimum sunspot number was at 10, at 2010, this point. And the next one was at 2021. Hence, the next maximum sunspot number was at 2016 that corresponds to the maximum of the Earth's average day length. 2016. It means that the maximum sun activity at 2016, 26, 1995, 1983, and 1972 causes the maximum geomagma activity and maximum the, of the average day length. As a conclusion, we revealed sun earth moon interaction that is responsible for large scale years and small scale days variations of the earth day length defined by sun and the moon mysteries of earth explained by womb expanding earth this hypothesis asserts that the position and relative movement of continents is at least partially due to the volume of the Earth increasing. In 1888, Yarkovsky suggested that some sort of ether is absorbed with the Earth and transformed into new chemical elements, forcing the celestial bodies to expand. The thesis of Hilgenberg and Tesla were based on absorption and transformation of ether energy into normal matter. Now it's close to womb model. In spite of recognition of plate tectonics, scientific consensus has rejected any significant expansion or contraction of Earth. In womb, the Earth's UC matter core absorbs new UC particles and its size is increasing in time proportional to root square of time. There is an expansion of UC matter core and hence the upper mantle with crust is stretching out. Due to UC particle self annihilation, new chemical elements are created inside of the upper mantle with crust. As a result, the relative movement of continents is happening. Internal heating. The analysis of the sun's heat for planets in solar system yields the effective temperature of the Earth of 255 Kelvin. The actual mean surface temperature of Earth is 288 Kelvin. The high actual temperature of the Earth is due to the heat generated internally by the planet itself. According to the standard model, the Earth's internal heat is produced mostly through radioactive decay. The major heat producing isotopes within the Earth are Kalium-40, Uranium-238, and Thorium-232. The mean global heat loss from Earth is 44.2 terawatts. The Earth's uranium has been thought to be produced in one or more supernova over 6 billion years ago. Radiogenic decay. It can be estimated from the flux of geoneutrinos that are emitting, emitted during radioactive decay. The Kamlat collaboration combined precise measurements of the geoneutrino flux from the Kamioka detector Japan with existing measurements from the Borixino detector Italy. 
They found that decay of uranium-238 and taurine 232 together contribute about 20 terawatts to the total heat flux from the Earth to space. The neutrinos emitted from the decay of calcium-40 contribute 4 terawatts. Based on the observations, the Kamlan collaboration made a conclusion that heat from radioactive decay contributes about half of Earth's total heat flux. Plutonium-244, with half-life of 80 million years, is not produced in significant quantities by the nuclear fuel cycle because it needs very high neutron flux environments. Any plutonium-2244 present in the Earth's crust should have decayed by now. Nevertheless, Hoffman in 1971 obtained the first indication of plutonium-244 present in existence in temperature, in nature. In whom all chemical products of the Earth, including isotopes, and plutonium-244 are produced by UC matter reactor inside of the Earth during 4.57 billion years and are in fact homemade. They are the result of UC fermion-1 with 1.3 tera electron volt rest energy self-annihilation compared to the proton rest energy 938 mega electron volts. It's more than one, three orders of magnitude less. The products arrive in the crust of the Earth due to convection currents in the mantle carrying heat and isotopes from the interior to the planet's surface. As a conclusion, the internal heating of all gravitation around the macro objects of solar system is due to UC particle self annihilation in their UC matter cores made up of UC particles. The amount of energy produced due to this process is sufficiently high to heat up macro objects. New UC particles freely penetrate through the entire macro objects in the low, get absorbed into UC matter cores, and continuously support UC particles' self annihilation. Faint Young Tan Paradox. It describes the apparent contradiction between observations of liquid water early in Earth's history and the astrophysical expectation that the sun's output would be only 70% as intense during that epoch as it is during a modern epoch. The early Earth would be expected to be completely frozen by the early Earth seems to have had liquid water. The issue was raised by Sagan and Mullen in 1972. An unresolved question is how a climate suitable for life was maintained on Earth over the long time scale despite the variable solar output. Proposed resolutions of this paradox have taken into account greenhouse effects, changes to planetary albedo, etc. One of the consequences of Wum holds that all stars feel fainter in the past, and their cores absorb new UC matter, size of macro object cores, and their luminosity are increasing in time, size proportional to root square of time, and luminosity proportional to tau respectively. Taking the age of the world 14.2 billion years and the age of solar system 4.6 billion years, it is easy to find that the young sun's output was 67% of what it is today. Literature commonly refers to the value of 70%. In frames of womb, the upper mantle with crust are due to UC matter core activity, a self annihilation of UC particles in the UCM core. As a result of this activity, 
the thickness of the upper mantle with crust is growing in time. The early earth had a smaller thickness than it is in the present time. Hence, the temperature of the earth's surface was higher than its calculated temperature based on the sun's output at the time. Geocorona and planetary corona. The geocorona is the luminous part of the outmost region of the Earth's atmosphere that extends to at least 640,000 kilometers from the Earth. It is seen primarily via, via far ultraviolet light from Sun that is scattered by neutral hydrogen. Far ultraviolet photons in geocorona have been observed out to a distance of approximately 100,000 kilometers from the Earth. The first high quality and wide field of view image of Earth's corona at of, of 240,000 kilometers was obtained by Hisaki, the first interplanetary micro spacecraft. Hisaki acquired spectral images in the range 52 for 148 nanometers, deep UV, of the atmospheres of planets from Earth's orbit and has provided quasi-continuous remote sensing observations of the geocorona since 2013. The most popular explanation of this geocoronal emission is the scattering of solar far ultraviolet photons by exospheric hydrogen. X-rays from Earth's geocorona were first detected by Chandra X-ray Observatory in 1999. X-rays were observed in the range of energies 0.08 to 10 kilo electron volts. The main mechanism explaining geocorona X-rays is that they are caused by collisions between neutral atoms in the geocorona with carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen ions that are streaming away from the sun in the solar wind. The process is called charge exchange. Cis in electron is exchanged between neutral atoms in geocorona and ions in the solar wind. X-rays for planets were observed also observed by Chandra in 2012. According to NASA, the X-rays from Venus and to some extent the Earth are due to the fluorescence of solar X-rays striking the atmosphere. Fluorescence X-rays from oxygen atoms in the Martian atmosphere probe heights similar to those of Venus. A huge Martian dust storm was in progress when the Chandra observations were made. The intensity of the X-rays didn't change during the dust storm. Jupiter has an environment capable of producing X-rays in a different manner because of its substantial magnetic field. X-rays are produced when high energy particles from the sun get trapped in its magnetic field and accelerated toward the polar regions where they collide with atoms in Jupiter's atmosphere. Like Jupiter, Saturn has a strong magnetic field so it was expected that Saturn would also show a concentration of X-rays toward the poles. However, Chandra's observations revealed instead an increased X-ray brightness in the equatorial region. Furthermore, Saturn's X-ray spectrum was found to be similar to that of X-rays from the Sun. In our opinion, the described picture of geo and planetary coronas is similar to the picture of the solar corona. At the distance of 243,000 kilometers from the Earth, atoms and molecules are so far apart that they can travel hundreds of kilometers without colliding with one another. Thus, the exosphere no longer behaves like a gas and the particles constantly escape into space. 
in our view, far ultraviolet radiation and X-rays are the consequence of UC fermion 3 with rest energy, 3.7 kilo electron volts self annihilation. All planets and some observed satellites, Europa, Eo, Eo, Plasma, Taurus, Titan, have X-rays in upper atmosphere of the planets, similar to the solar corona. According to whom, the characteristics of geocorona are similar to the characteristics of solar corona. The geocorona made up of UC particles resembles a honeycomb filled with plasma, including the ionosphere from about 60 kilometers to 1000 kilometers altitude. The geocorona is a stable shell around the Earth with inner radius about 6.4 thousand kilometers and observed outer radius about 640 thousand kilometers. The total mass of these shells is about 10 to the power 18 kilograms. At the distance of 640 thousand kilometers from the Earth, atoms and molecules are so far apart that the outmost region of the Earth's atmosphere no longer behaves like a gas. X-rays and gamma rays are the consequence of UC particle self-annihilation. They are going not only up and out of the Earth, but also down to the Earth's surface. According to whom, the characteristics of geocorona are similar to the characteristics of the solar corona. As the result of a large fluctuations of UC particles in geocorona, and their self annihilation X-rays and gamma rays are going not only up and out of Earth, but also down to the Earth's surface. In our view, terrestrial gamma ray flashes are, in fact, well-known gamma ray bursts. The spectra of them at very high energies can be explained by UCF1 and UCF2 self annihilation Lightning initiation problem can be solved by X-rays and gamma rays, which slam into thunder clouds and carve a conductive path through the thunderstorm. From this point of view, it is easy to explain all experimental results, which we will discuss with you in presentation 7. Conclusion. Alatra International Public Movement was founded in 2011 on basis of Ladoga International Public Organization. Today, participants of the movement are implementing a vast number of large-scale projects in different areas. The projects are being accomplished by the world's best volunteer experts from various walks of life who are not indifferent to the future of our civilization and who develop their professional and creative potential for the benefit of the whole humanity. We hope that womb that explains Earth's environmental challenges to the best of our knowledge today will help a lot to analyze their experimental results through the prism of womb, perform new targeted experiments and make reliable forecasts for the future of our planet. In our opinion, we should concentrate our efforts on investigations of the oceans and volcanoes, which are responsible for the climate changes. Acknowledgements. I am always grateful to academician Prokhorov and Professor Maninko, whose influence on my scientific life has been decisive. I am internally grateful to my scientific father, Paul Dirac, who was a genius and foresaw the future of physics in a new cosmology. I am forever grateful to Nikola Tesla, who was a genius. I am much obliged to Professor Korda for publishing my manuscripts in the Journal of High Energy Physics, Gravitation and Cosmology. I am grateful to Nick Percival and Harry Ricker for valuable comments and suggestions which have led to an overall improvement of the presentation. Special thanks to my son, Ilya, who helped me clarify model 
and improve its understanding. This is the end of this presentation. Thank you very much for attending it, for your attention.